In the deepest recesses of my heart, a tumultuous mix of emotions churned as I stood there, aghast and dumbfounded, absorbing the hurtful words hurled at me by my eldest son's wife, Jessica. The venomous sting of her declaration resonated within me, leaving an indelible mark on my soul. I don't like anything about you, mother, she said with an acrimony that cut deep. Her words were like an unexpected gale force, tearing through the peaceful facade of our family abode. I had never expected such a confrontation, and it left me reeling. We want to live with our family alone, so get out, she continued, her voice dripping with disdain. It was as if she had taken a page from the past, echoing the very words that once forced me to leave my childhood home, alone and crestfallen. Now, here I was, standing in my own son's house, being asked to leave once again, as if history was repeating itself in a cruel twist of fate. The anger surged within me, an inferno ignited by the thought of being driven out of this home as well. How could she treat me this way? I had spent years nurturing and caring for my children, putting their needs above my own. Was this how I was to be repaid? It was a bitter pill to swallow, knowing that the love and sacrifice I had poured into our family were seemingly discarded without a second thought. With a heavy heart, I mustered the strength to respond. Well, I'll leave then. My words were firm, resolute, but laced with an undercurrent of pain. Gathering my belongings, I couldn't help but feel a profound sense of betrayal. The hurt went beyond just my son's wife. It felt like a betrayal for my own flesh and blood, my son whom I had raised with love and tenderness. As I prepared to move out, my mind raced with thoughts of disappointment and resentment. It was the last straw, the final act in a series of grievances that had accumulated over time. My eldest son's wife had been a constant source of tension and conflict since the day she entered our lives. I vowed never to forgive her for the pain she had caused. In the days that followed, I found solace in introspection, seeking to understand the reasons behind this sudden upheaval. My name is Sandra Clark, and I am turning 61 this year. Technically retired, I still find myself engaged in work-related activities, grateful for the opportunity to contribute even in my senior years. Remote work has become the norm, allowing me to maintain my productivity while staying close to my loved ones. Life had dealt me the challenge of widowhood in my 40s, leaving me to navigate the complexities of single motherhood. Now, I reside with my eldest son and his wife in my parents' old house, a place laden with cherished memories and a comforting sense of familiarity. Despite its age and occasional issues, this house represented a haven of peace, a sanctuary where I could feel the embrace of family and warmth. Financially, I had been blessed with stability, my late husband's insurance payout, ensuring that my twilight years were free from financial worries. While my life seemed carefree on the surface, it was not without its share of concerns, the most prominent being my relationship with Jessica. From the very moment she stepped into our lives, Jessica exuded a strong-willed and assertive personality, often clashing with my more traditional views. I couldn't forget the unconventional outfit she chose to wear when she first introduced herself, dismissing societal norms with a defiant stance. While some might appreciate her honesty, I couldn't help but find it somewhat disconcerting. As time went on, Jessica's behavior remained consistent. She was unpretentious, perhaps to a fault. Her argumentative nature, coupled with her articulate communication skills, made it challenging to find common ground. I often wondered why my son chose her as his life partner. It later came to light that it was Jessica who had pursued my son, an audacious move that left me perplexed. Despite my reservations, I chose not to oppose their marriage, believing that it was my son's happiness that mattered most. Little did I know the series of challenges that awaited us as we embarked on this shared living arrangement. My son wanted us to live together as a family, and surprisingly, Jessica was in favor of the idea as well. 
It was after we began cohabiting that I saw the true extent of Jessica's approach to household responsibilities. She demonstrated little interest in performing house chores, leaving everything, cleaning, laundry, meal preparation, to me. This was particularly perplexing since she was a full-time housewife, having quit her job at the time of the marriage. As someone who still worked remotely, my schedule demanded a fair share of my time and attention. However, Jessica belittled my commitment to work, undermining its importance and dismissing it as mere play. It hurt to be undervalued in this manner, and I initially laughed it off, not wanting to exacerbate the tension. But as days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the simmering resentment within me began to boil. I mustered the courage to ask Jessica to contribute to the household tasks, hoping for a sense of partnership and understanding. Yet her response was far from what I expected. Jessica retorted with a deeply disgusted expression, sighing in a dramatic fashion. She justified her reluctance to help by presenting a unique theory, one that claimed she refrained from doing housework for my sake. According to Jessica, if she took on the chores, it would rob me of my only job, rendering me sedentary and potentially leading to health issues. Her reasoning seemed absurd and left me with a headache trying to comprehend its logic. To Jessica, she was doing me a favor by letting me handle the housework. It was a twisted form of thoughtfulness, and her half-smile as she explained it only added to my frustration. In hindsight, I deeply regretted agreeing to live together. Each passing day became a reminder of the unfulfilled expectations and the constant scrutiny of my actions. I yearned for the peace and independence that living separately would have afforded me. Yet, I had chosen to stay in the hope of maintaining a semblance of family unity. Now, as I reached my limit, I knew it was time to take a stand for myself, to reclaim the respect and dignity that should be accorded to any family member. I sought to find a way to address the conflicts within our home and establish boundaries that would protect my well-being while preserving the bonds of kinship. This was a journey of introspection and courage, one that would require open communication, empathy, and an understanding of each other's perspectives. My age and experience had taught me the value of resilience, and I was determined to navigate this intricate family dynamic with grace and strength. As I ventured into this chapter of my life, I held on to the hope that healing and harmony would ultimately prevail, restoring the sense of familial love and support we all deserved. After much contemplation, I finally decided to have a candid conversation with my eldest son. It was not to complain about Jessica, but rather to express my need to move to a more suitable living situation. Our current house had served as a family home for years, but it presented several challenges, especially for someone like me, who had been grappling with age-related issues. A back injury from the previous year had left me with aching bones, and the many level differences in the house only added to the strain. Having considered my well-being, I shared my concerns with my son, explaining the difficulty of living in the old house and how it was impacting my daily life. It wasn't about being driven out by Jessica, but rather a realization that I needed a place that catered to my specific needs at this stage of life. So, with a heavy heart, I made the decision to move into a new apartment. The apartment was a rental, and although I thought it might be too spacious for one person, I deliberately chose a room large enough to accommodate my beloved grandchildren should they wish to stay over in the future. The interior was customized to my taste, turning my new abode into a haven of comfort and tranquility. Despite the initial joy of having my own castle, the serenity was short-lived. To my surprise and dismay, Jessica began visiting my apartment every day, staying late into the evening. Her presence felt intrusive, as if she was invading my newfound space. Rather than respecting my choice to live independently, she seemed to encroach upon my privacy, making it increasingly difficult for me to fully enjoy my sanctuary. With an air of arrogance, Jessica lounged on the living room couch, remarking about the apartment's size, 
insinuating that it was too big for me. She suggested that I return to the old house and resume the house chores, asserting that it would be beneficial for my health and longevity. I couldn't believe the audacity she displayed, blatantly disregarding my autonomy and well-being. Trying to maintain my composure, I explained that I had already moved out of the old house and that I was taking care of myself just fine. However, she responded with indifference, turning her head away as if my words were beneath her notice. It was a classic maneuver on her part, ignoring any inconvenient truths that challenged her perspective. Her relentless visits persisted, and she even spent the night at my apartment on one occasion. I had given a spare key to my son for emergencies, but Jessica seemed to have taken it upon herself to make herself at home in my absence, a violation of my trust and boundaries. Feeling unsettled and uncomfortable, I mustered the courage to confront her about her unwelcome behavior. For the first time, I sternly expressed my displeasure, making it clear that the spare key was meant for emergencies, not for her convenience. It was a confrontation that had been long overdue, and though she appeared taken aback, I refused to back down. Jessica retorted, labeling me as a stingy mother-in-law, claiming that she couldn't stand anything about me, including my new apartment. She demanded that I leave and return to the old house, asserting that it was a matter of fairness for the family. I couldn't believe the audacity of her entitlement, as she seemed to believe that my son was footing the bill for the apartment's rent. In her mind, the apartment should have been a residence for her family, not a place for me to live independently. But she had it all wrong. My new apartment was my sanctuary, a place where I could reclaim my freedom and live life on my terms. Refusing to be undermined any further, I stood my ground, telling Jessica that I would indeed leave the apartment as she seemed to wish. Her smug satisfaction was short-lived, as I assured her that I would move out as promised within three days. The decision to leave my beloved apartment was difficult, but I refused to be defeated. I swiftly arranged for a moving service, preparing to relocate to a new home, an apartment specifically designed for seniors, where I could embrace a life of independence and tranquility. Taking charge of my destiny, I handed over the keys and lease documents to Jessica, asking her to facilitate the necessary changes to the rental contract through the real estate agent. Fortunately, the landlord, whom I had known for a long time, was understanding and accommodating, easing the transition for me. While my eldest son was furious with Jessica for her actions, she seemed unfazed and uninterested in his feelings. It appeared that she had no qualms about living alone in the old house, making it clear that she was content with the separation. As I embraced my new home, I savored the newfound sense of independence and the freedom to live life on my own terms. It was a chapter of resilience and self-discovery, a testament to the strength that comes with standing up for oneself. With each passing day, I embraced the joy of living in a space that truly reflected my needs and desires, reveling in the peace that had eluded me for far too long. And so, the story of Sandra Clark continued, a journey of self-empowerment and the pursuit of happiness amidst the intricacies of family dynamics. As the days turned into weeks, I learned to cherish the little moments of solitude, appreciating the freedom to create a life filled with joy and contentment. The truth finally came to light, and the brazen facade Jessica had maintained for so long began to crumble. It was just five days since I had moved into my new apartment when Jessica's world unraveled before her eyes. As I diligently worked remotely, my phone incessantly rang with Jessica's name flashing on the screen. I had anticipated this moment and was well prepared with a recorder to document the conversation. With a deep breath, I pressed the record button before answering her call. Jessica's voice was tense and agitated as she immediately delved into her grievances. She questioned the rent for the apartment, demanding to know why she had to pay. In response, I calmly reminded her that she was the current leaseholder, making it only fair for her to shoulder the responsibility. I spoke in a measured tone, 
deliberately aiming to ruffle her feathers and assert my independence. Jessica, increasingly flustered, persisted, arguing that my eldest son used to pay the rent, and since they were not yet divorced, he should continue doing so. However, I knew this was not the case. I had been secretly supporting my son financially, assisting him in overcoming the debt incurred by Jessica's extravagant spending habits. With resolve, I corrected her misconception, revealing that I had been the one paying the rent for the apartment all along. Jessica's reaction was one of shock and disbelief. It was evident that she had never imagined the truth would come to light. After a brief exchange, she hung up, seemingly unable to cope with the reality of her actions being exposed. I immediately contacted my eldest son and played the recorded conversation for him, confirming the deception that had been woven around the rent issue. We both acknowledged our shared exhaustion from dealing with Jessica's behavior and the toll it had taken on our family. We knew it was time for a drastic step to be taken. My son decided to take a few days of paid leave to execute our plan discreetly. He began moving his important belongings out of the house without Jessica noticing. We wanted to avoid any confrontation that might escalate matters further. Our goal was to ensure a smooth transition for both parties involved. Following my instructions, he strategically moved his things during the night, ensuring that no suspicious moving trucks were present to give away his plans. The location where he relocated his belongings was a single-family home that I had thoughtfully arranged. It was a place where Jessica would be unaware, keeping her in the dark about his intentions. Three days later, Jessica called again, this time sounding even more anxious and disoriented than before. Her world seemed to be crashing down around her. She was informed that the house they lived in was up for sale, and to her bewilderment, her belongings had arrived at her parents' house. The sense of panic and confusion in her voice was palpable. Unknown to her, my son had already submitted the divorce papers to the city office as per our plan. He had decided to sever ties with Jessica, no longer willing to tolerate her manipulative ways and extravagant demands. He had taken a bold step towards freedom submitting the papers and formally ending their relationship. It seemed Jessica's threats of divorce had become a habitual tactic, pushing my son to comply with her wishes. He had clung to the hope that she would eventually change, but it was clear that he could no longer bear the burden of their tumultuous marriage. The realization that she was no longer my daughter-in-law came as a shock to Jessica. Her attempts to control and manipulate had finally backfired leaving her reeling from the consequences of her actions. I couldn't hold back any longer. It was time to address everything that had been building up over time. With a mix of frustration and disappointment, I told her that we were strangers now, and the relationship we once had was severed by the divorce papers. In the midst of her emotional turmoil, I made it clear that the house she had lived in was indeed up for sale, leaving her locked out and without a place to return to. The abrupt reality of her actions was beginning to hit home. As I vented my frustrations, Jessica must have realized that her actions had pushed away the family she once had. She had gambled with her marriage, and now the stakes were too high for her to bear. It was a moment of reckoning, where all the built-up stress and anger found an outlet. My son had taken a stand, refusing to be manipulated any longer. It was a turning point as we both embraced the certainty that he was on the path to healing and finding his own happiness. The journey ahead would undoubtedly be challenging, but the weight that had burdened us for so long was finally lifted. My son was ready to face the future without the shackles of a toxic relationship, and I was prepared to support him as he embarked on this new chapter of life. The truth had come to light, and in its wake, we discovered the strength to reclaim our lives and build a future free from manipulation and deceit. The days ahead would be uncertain, but together we would navigate the path to healing and renewal, ready to embrace life's possibilities with open hearts and minds. The days that followed the heated phone call with Jessica brought a mixture of relief and closure. 
It was apparent that my eldest son had finally found the courage to break free from the suffocating grip of their tumultuous marriage. He had signed and submitted the divorce papers that had long been used as a threat, initiating the formal process to end their union. During our conversation, Jessica had expressed her frustration and resentment, cursing me for managing my late husband's inheritance and denying her access to it. Her outburst only confirmed the necessity of my son's decision to end their marriage, as it became evident that she had been driven by ulterior motives from the beginning. As the conversation unfolded, I calmly listened to her rants, capturing every moment with the recorder, intending to use it as evidence in a potential divorce settlement. The recording revealed her true colors, unmasking her manipulation and highlighting the consequences of her actions. The situation escalated further after Jessica was locked out of the apartment she had been squatting in without paying rent. The landlord had changed the locks, leaving her with no access to the place she once called home. The police were called in due to her disruptive behavior at my eldest son's workplace, a manifestation of her desperation and anger. With our cell phone numbers changed and our whereabouts kept secret, Jessica was unable to reach us, leaving her feeling abandoned and disowned. She attempted to seek refuge with her disowned family, only to be met with rejection and hostility. Her belongings were left out in the rain, and she was barred from entering their house. I crossed paths with Jessica on the street, and the transformation she had undergone was striking. The stress and uncertainty had taken a toll on her, her hair turning white, and her skin losing its luster. It was evident that her previous lavish lifestyle had vanished, and she was now faced with the harsh reality of her choices. In stark contrast, I had started a new chapter in my life, settling into the house I had purchased with my late husband's inheritance. The duplex allowed me to create a space for my son to return to whenever he wished. He would join me for dinner occasionally, but he had embraced his independence, managing his own affairs. This newfound distance between us felt right, striking a balance between family bonds and individual autonomy. The money from the sale of my parents' home was wisely saved for future needs, including supporting my son and any future grandchildren. With a sense of purpose, I envisioned an English garden in my new home, a place where I could nurture young trees and herbs, a source of joy and serenity on days I didn't work. This daily routine filled me with hope and contentment, reminding me that life was indeed full of possibilities, even after moments of hardship and change. As I savored the tranquility of my new life, I knew that I had made the right decision to leave the past behind. The path ahead was promising, and I was ready to embrace it with an open heart, knowing that the trials and tribulations of the past had only made me stronger. And so the story of Sandra Clark continued, an embodiment of resilience and growth, a testament to the human spirit's capacity to overcome adversity. The future held promise, and I eagerly looked forward to the days ahead, cherishing the simple joys of tending to my garden, savoring quiet evenings in my duplex, and relishing the newfound sense of freedom that came with embracing my own path.